get sorry that's out on the street. <laughs> that what you got? This is what you on the street. We're back to back and your ass is dead meat. Victory is sweet. Here's a receipt. What you gonna do about it? Is that what you got? How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number four of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching up The Lowdown Show. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at no Holds Bar WP and join in on the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. All links will be in the YouTube video description below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week I continue to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Meh. Yeah, yeah. Meh. Yeah. It is a, a meh kind of feeling right now. The, Summertime out, but the WrestleMania hangover is fucking real. Especially this week. Oh I thought God. last week was pretty bad. This week was even worse. I didn't even want to review this week. We even had, we had a go home show this week. And it was and it was bad. Greg says, afternoon, gents. Afternoon to you, too. I hope you're having a nice day as well, Greg. It is a beautiful day here in beautiful Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. The home of Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10. Um, but yeah, fucking shitty week. Sorry to be so blunt and, you know, got some no-holds-barred language there, but it was bad. This week was freaking terrible. I didn't like it. Nothing, like, I, I'm... I'm like you just said, I don't even want to do the review. All right, we're gone, Lex Joan. Have a good night. See ya. <laughs> no, can't do that. Can't do that to our fans out there. Can't do that. Got to give the review. As bad as stuff happens, we got to give the review. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I got uh, mixed feelings about this week. Mixed feelings, and we'll get into that in the review. Um, before we start the show, though, guys, if you want to support the podcast, as always... We have two ways of supporting the podcast. One is our GoFundMe page. And that is solely based on us getting to WrestleMania 34 next year. So go check that out. GoFundMe.com slash NHBWP2Mania. And the link will be in the description on YouTube for you guys as well. If you also wanted to to support the podcast, we have a Patreon page. I'm still kind of working on. I kind of got to edit some things on there. But if you like to to support the podcast, as little as a dollar a month. You can support the podcast right here. Anything helps, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to support the podcast, there are your two ways of uh, supporting the podcast. So got my plug in there. <laughs> got to get the plug in every show. Mm-hmm. Next plug is our Twitter fan of the month for March, which we'll be announcing our new Twitter fan for April in this episode of the podcast uh, for March, and that is Juggy Badass at Zazel TV or YT on Twitter. Guys, if you want to know what Twitter fan of the month is um, – Twitter Fan of the Month wins the honorary uh, shout-out every show, every show on the Lowdown Show, and they get their tweets read first right here on the podcast. And <laughs> Juggy just got his tweets in before the show started, too, today. Uh, some others, too. But uh, thank you, Juggy, for sending in your tweets. Got Michael Chow TV. Michael Chow TV is here in the chat. He says, the host that runs the West Coast is here. Hello to you, too, Michael Chow. Um <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> the guy, the guy, the guy that runs the West Coast. But yeah, that is a Twitter fan of the month. So you know what? We'll just announce the Twitter fan of the month for April, right now. You got a and drum roll? I, I don't got. I, I've lost. I had the, the the little sound effect for drum roll. I couldn't tell you where it went. It just disappeared from Spreaker one day. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll re-download it for for May. 
But for right now, you know, if you guys can hear that, the winner for April Twitter Fan of the Month is Casey Salvis at Salvis94 on Twitter. He wins our Twitter Fan of the Month for April for his hilarious, and we picked him solely based on his hilarious Roman Reigns tweets and, and his hate for Roman Reigns. Support every week, yeah, and the continued support. So congratulations, Casey Salvis, on winning Twitter Fan of the Month for April. He will get his. Tweets read first, and a shout-out on every show starting next month for glad, the month of May. Glad he could win something, unlike his Montreal Canadiens. Ooh! Ouch, I can't say anything either. Well, you know, I can't say, because, you know, I'm Leaf fan, our rivals are the Habs. We went out the same way, so. It's all right. You guys joined my Sabres on the golf course. Yeah, we're all time. teeing off right yeah. now. All right. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into your tweets out there. Let's get the show started off here. And we'll start off with our previous Twitter fan of the month, and that is Juggy. Last time for Juggy. Last time for Juggy. Juggy, you're getting your uh, tweets read last first, or, if I'm wording that right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, the f- for the last time. Last time. As the first person to and, be read. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you win May. Unless you win May. Who knows? You know, you, people out there, you're able to win Twitter fan of the month multiple times. It's not just a one-time thing. So... You know, keep the tweets up, and uh, we'll choose you. And we're choosing Casey Salvis for uh, the month of April. So congratulations again to Casey Salvis. So let's get Juggy Badass's tweets out of the way. Out of Zazel YT, he puts, All right, guys, here's the big dog's thoughts about this week. <laughs> Everything fucking sucked. This clusterfuck of a mess is giving me a brain cancer. <laughs> Who all here on this show is excited about payback? I'll wait. That's right. Not one fucking person. Do we even know what the House of Horrors match is? No. WWE doesn't even freaking know who it is. Or what it is. Uh, why did they not make... And I have some news about that later. Why did they make Payback a Raw... Why didn't they just make Payback a Raw and SmackDown pay-per-view? Why are we still watching this dumpster fire company? Seeing how WWE has been operating the past couple of weeks. Which really makes me miss WCW. <laughs> oh my god. Um... Fuck ratings. Both shows failed. I'm really being hate. I'm really beginning to hate this product. If anyone needs me, I'll be watching New Japan and Impact. <laughs> Hashtag make WWE great again. <laughs> uh, Michael Chalpas, welcome to the NHBWP rant show. Because this week, oh yeah, wait for the review, Michael Chalpas. Just wait. We got a lot to talk about this week. So we'll get your tweets out of the way first. But thank you, Juggy Badass, for your tweets and for winning Twitter Fan of the Month for the month of March. And we'll just get into, right into the next tweets. Next tweets come from Glorious Greg at xgilly929. He puts, Raw was okay. My favorite thing about the whole show was seeing Balor, Rollins, and the Hardys, and Strowman. So I'll give Raw a 4 out of 10. Ooh, 4 out of 10. I don't know why I just ooed that. <laughs> uh and Rod doesn't deserve any ooze this week. Number two, he puts, I would love to see Elias Samson drift past Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton during the House of Horrors match. I think that would be funny. Can you imagine? What? There's like, there's like just like a dead a dead spot in the House of Horrors match and Elias Samson just playing his guitar walking by. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, SmackDown was also okay. I was surprised by the Brazongo, by that Brazongo are number one contenders for the tag team titles. And Naomi and Charlotte match was pretty fun. Corbin is a beast. Hashtag Corbin Revolution. I can get behind that. Yes, he is a beast. I'll give SmackDown a 6 out of 10. What do you guys think of Brazongo being the number one contender for the tag team titles? And what did you think of Rusev's promo demanding a world title match? Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get your Rars in there, eh? I to get the the Braun Strowman Rars. I agree. Did you say I it was bad because the big dog wasn't on the show? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> his, his boy got roasted last week yep. for not being on the show by everybody. Yep. So we'll see if it happens. But uh, as to your answers to your questions, Greg, there will be answers in the review. I actually have answers for both, and we have our opinions for both, so stay tuned for that. Oh, I thought you were still reading Juggy tweets. No, those were Glorious Greg's. Oh, fuck, I'm not paying attention right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at my grades and stuff for school. I'm trying oh, to okay. figure that shit out. Uh, Michael Chow TV puts in the chat, I love Payback. Well, the 90, 1999 action movie called Payback starring Mel Gibson. <laughs> 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 the release oh Payback is rather... Wa- I'd rather watch W Studios' Chaperone the extended cuts and the piece of bur- the piece of burring balls of fire garbage pay per view. 
<laughs> oh, man, we'll, we'll get into that later about that. I got some stuff to talk about for that. But thank you, Glorious Greg, for your tweets, as always. We appreciate it. Next set tweets comes from our new Twitter fan of the month, and that is Casey Salas at Salvas94. Oh, no. Here we go. He puts, Raw was boring. Nothing exciting happened. Get Bailey off my TV. Her gimmick is garbage. Hope Alexa takes that title. Yeah. Bailey is boring. <laughs> it's sad because Bailey's my girl too, and I honestly hate her gimmick too, man. It's cringing. It's not the same Bailey we had in NXT. Why did we choose to water it down? That's just typical WWE, and it sucks. There's not. We can sit here and complain all we want. It's not going to change anything. We just got to roll with the punches. I just got to shake my head and go, man, she's still women's champion. That's all I got to say about that. For now. Anyways. Uh, Casey puts, at least hashtag. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bra. And he puts, he puts brawn, but I'm, I'm assuming he meant the roar. <laughs> Looks dominant. Should beat Reigns this Sunday. Raw, three out of ten. Good rating there. He didn't there. say anything about garbage Reigns, did he? <laughs> well, he said brawn should beat Reigns. Oh. <laughs> Uh, SmackDown was also boring. Actually liked Mahal stealing the title. Also, nice to see Brazongo win besides that besides that boring show. And don't like the new Owens gimmick. 4 out of 10. It's hmm. a pretty inter- uh You know, I like those ratings. Uh, I'll give it that. Uh, next tweet comes from It's Real To Me Damn It at RTM Wrestling on Twitter, guys. They also do a UK-based WWE podcast, so go check them out. They also do some stuff on ICW, a local independent wrestling company near them. So go check them out on Twitter and follow them on YouTube. They put SmackDown just took it for me on a pretty dire week. SmackDown Women's Title Title Mate was great. Hmm. Okay, interesting thought there. It was all right. It was good match though. I just didn't like the end of it, and we'll get into that in the review. Um, next tweets: Joshy J at uh, Joshy underscore J. Hopefully after payback, it feels less clustered because this week was horrible. Not even reviewing the shows. Raw 3, SmackDown 2.5. I'll admit SmackDown was uh, probably a tad better, but Ascension losing in two minutes to Brazongo lost it for them. <laughs> I agree with him with that. You know, I, I think Ascension should have been the ones to win there. Just saying. Uh, next set of tweets comes from hashtag FireJBL at Laughing Shovel on Twitter. Luke Tonkinson. Luke Tonkinson, a.k.a. <laughs> Both shows were shit this week. I'd rather I'd say Raw was better than SmackDown, only because I fell asleep during SmackDown Live. The I hashtag post WrestleMania bore. I, I literally fell asleep during SmackDown this yep. week. So did so did uh, Corporate Cappy there, yep. Luke Tonkinson. He puts Raw three point five out of ten, SmackDown three out of ten. Another j- good ratings there from uh, <laughs> our Twitter fans out there. That's better. Those are those are good ratings. Uh, Glorious <laughs> Greg, you were extremely generous this week. I'm just gonna let, put that out there. Uh, as he said in the chat, he was very generous this week, I think. They were glorious. They're a glorious rating from Glorious Greg. Um, next set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. Right, they come from Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter, guys. He the reason he has his own theme music is because he won our 2016 No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast Twitter Fan of the Year. And if you win this award, ladies and gentlemen, you get your own theme song before we read your tweets every show for the entire year. And Michael Chow chose this theme, and he also does a WWE podcast. So go check him out, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Chow TV. And he also does his show, WWE MCTV, The After Show. He's also available on Spreaker, so go check him out, ladies and gentlemen. He does some fantastic work as well there. So his tweets this week, Michael Chow puts, Both shows were bad. Might be the worst go-home shows ever. One out of ten for both shows. Hashtag clusterfuck. Hashtag missed opportunity. Hashtag dumpster inferno. So we got an even bigger dumpster fire in dumpster inferno. He's got the gif of Homer talking to his family. He's like, the lesson is, never try. You tried your best. I think you remember that, uh, Cobra Cappy. Yeah. Uh, next tweet. They should have scrapped the Orton and Bray and Jericho and Owens rematches at Payback. There's no build because the wrestlers are in different shows. He's got a gif of Jericho going, mm. 
Uh, he also puts, I suggest that to Vince, why can't Bray invade SmackDown Live or Owens invade Raw? Long story short, I've been fired from WB Creative for a ninth time. He's got Mr. McMahon saying you're fired in the gif. <laughs> uh, Michael Chow also puts, for SmackDown Live, I'm not liking this new Team Bad Volume 2. If you put three women in a team, you eliminate half of the other women competitors. <laughs> and it's got Naomi going, huh? In a gif. Uh, question what payback match are you looking forward to Alexa versus Bailey say what exactly <laughs> <laughs> he's got a gif it goes nice. really and it's got the Bailey chick going what we're gonna play this game Bailey chick going what Alexa Bliss is the best say what and the Bailey chick says what and then Bailey goes or er, Alexa Bliss goes exactly and it shows the Bailey girl crying <laughs> I, I think her it. name is uh... oh god I forgot her name she got her own like verified Twitter account now, I think. Cool. Uh, Michael Charles puts, oh, and by the way, I think Corporate Cappy will enjoy this. This looks and sounds like Vince. It shows Skinner going, am I out of touch? And then there's another thing going, no, it's the children who are wrong. The children, <laughs> yep. <laughs> he knows, uh, Michael Chow, he knows. So that is it for the tweets, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your tweets, as always. And to you who don't tweet out there, and continue your tweets. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. No, you know, you, you guys do what you got to do. We appreciate all the tweets that come in every week. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your tweets this week. We appreciate them as always. So let's get into that next part of the show. We'll start it off with the Raw Review. <sighs> God. We had a dumpster match on Raw this week, and it literally was like a representation of what Raw is, and that is a dumpster fire. There was no fire, but... It pretty much was a dumpster fire. Um, Raw this week was from the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Cricket, Missouri. <laughs> Fucking crickets this week. Again, both shows. And we'll get into that on SmackDown. SmackDown's the worst this week, I think. <laughs> but uh, we start off <laughs> with the opening segment. We get the highlight reel to start off the show. Interesting. Uh, Jericho welcome, welcomes us, us all to a monumental edition of the highlight reel. This is going to be the last highlight reel we see on Monday Night Raw. Why? Because Jericho is going to beat Owens for the United States Championship and head to SmackDown Live. Uh, don't think so, Jericho. But Jericho notes that it doesn't matter where he is because he will always have the support of his friends of Jericho. Cheer him on, man! <laughs> the last highlight reel deserves a huge guest. So tonight's guest is Chris Jericho! Chat him up, man! <laughs> oh, that was great. That was fantastic. Uh, Owen split to SmackDown Live and calls himself the face of SmackDown in America. Jericho says Owens looks like a cross between Grumpy Cat and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Miz then comes out and demands to the, the ring crew to, and the set to be changed to Miz TV. So the ring crew very, very quickly, like I, this was quick. This just proves how quick they are. Changes it to Miz TV. Miz welcomes a crowd to the must-see television show, and as Miz TV. But before he can continue, Dean Ambrose comes out. And Ambrose says that Jericho is right. Miz is a stupid idiot. <laughs> yep. Ambrose demands the crew to switch it to the Ambrose Asylum, and then they switch it over to the Ambrose Asylum. We get three shows in one segment. Awesome. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Ambrose apologized to Jericho and got him a gift. A new makeshift jacket with, uh, it's got Christmas lights <laughs> all through the jacket. <laughs> this is awesome. And uh, it tells Jericho to try it on, man. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head at that? <laughs> this is great. You love the jacket. <laughs> I do. That jacket was something else. <laughs> it was, I, I saw a good meme. It was uh, what it looks like when you buy it online and it shows his light bright jacket. And then when it comes and it shows Yeah, it shows jacket. that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Um, Miz says it looks hideous. Well, of course you do, Miz. Guy's dressed like a blind nut. You don't think you look it? You fucking hideous. All right, that's all right. I won't get into that. Anyways, uh, Miz says the quality of the jacket is the product of an intercontinental champion that is a lazy slacker. Ooh, so another plug there. Uh, is this another jab at uh, at Dean Ambrose for being lazy? Are we getting another jab here? I guess so. I don't know, man. I don't. It is beyond me. This might be another jab. I don't know. I can't. 
I, I, I can't even speculate because I, I don't know what the whole story is be, be behind that. So, I don't know. Um, sure. I, I, I can't sit here and, and make fun of someone being lazy when you don't know the whole story behind it, right? Like you, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes before you can call Dean Ambrose lazy. That's just my opinion. Um, I don't know why they keep jabbing at it. If it's that much of a personal issue, should they be even jabbing at it? <laughs> like, I mean, the WWE tries to get away from this whole bullying thing, yet they keep doing this. Isn't that a way of bullying? Is this well, bullying I, I in guess some they're, way? They're saying it's part of storyline, not not actually what's going on. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, Ambrose gives Miz a dirty deeds and leaves. Jericho asks Maurice if she knows what happens when you're married to the Miz, and then Maurice makes the list. So interesting opening segment there. Um, again, it's weird how like. Jericho's facing Owens, but like they're tying in another feud here. And all it's again the shakeup. Actually, what everyone's saying, it is a clusterfuck. It, the whole week this week and the last couple of weeks have been clusterfucks. It's almost like we have to wait till after payback for everything to get cleared again. Again, it, like we like we said, it's no excuse for the product that they're showing. Like this is if Vince had this idea of a shakeup, don't go in, you know. Just do it right away. You have to take time in doing things because clearly it's showing how much they've screwed up. So, just saying. Uh, Michael Chow puts, tune in next week to Raw when we have the Highlight Reel, Miz TV, the Ambrose Asylum, the Peep Show, Edge and Lita's Live Sex Show, the Rock Show, Carlito's Commander, and the brand new talk show, Roman's Yard, with just Roman standing still and getting booed for 15 minutes. <laughs> Don't forget about MVP's uh, MVP Lounge. Oh, yeah, the MVP it. Lounge. The VIP Lounge, whatever the hell it was called. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, <laughs> I thought the switching of the shows was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, Cesaro and Matt Hardy have a match. Basically the same as last week. Uh, Sheamus versus uh, Jeff Hardy was the match last week. Now we get the opposites. Uh, showcasing their matchup against each other for payback, I guess. Whenever. Oh, my God, this match. <laughs> uh, Cobra Cappy sent it to me over uh, text again. Oh. The one part where he hits Sheamus is like 58 seconds into the highlight video. And he just turns around and goes, yeah! This is so <laughs> random. Like, you just literally just hit him with a forearm. He just turns around, yeah! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, he and doesn't it, know what the hell he is. He doesn't know if he's V1, if he's broken, if he's what what he is. You know what it is? It's wonderful. Yeah, after he won the match, he goes, wonderful. <laughs> uh, showcasing their matchup for Bayback, I guess. It was a good match, though. Both Hardys, uh, both sure they can still go. Jeff kind of still looks banged up and might, may need some time to heal. Uh, we'll uh, see what happens Jeff with him. Jeff looked way better in the ring than Matt did. Yeah, but that's always been like that's always been like that. It's yeah. always, Jeff has always been the better athlete than Matt. Matt is better at character building. <laughs> um, Jeff Hardy gets pushed by Sheamus when he's trying to help his brother Matt up. Climbs up to the apron and then yells at Sheamus. Cesaro pulls Jeff Hardy down while Sheamus is distracted. He turns around to the twist of fate. Yes, and then Matt Hardy wins. Both teams shake hands, and before they're about to shake hands, Matt's like, "You sure you want to shake my hand, or I'll delete you?" He does a delete thing right at Sheamus. Like, like uh, JD said, I th- I think that Matt Hardy has borderline personality disorder. <laughs> like, he doesn't know what the hell he is. Oh, uh, it was great. I like this. It was an enjoyed. It, it was an it was an enjoyable segment. Enjoyable in most of the show, and yeah. actually the rest of the show. But we got something else that was enjoyable, and I actually like, and we both liked. Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher versus Neville and TJ Perkins. It's just a regular tag team match, but it was really good. It's a really good spot fest match. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. I think it was WWE's way of getting more interest into the 205 Live division. Austin Aries had carried the match, though, mostly. Yeah, 100%. And uh, Jack and Austin Aries teamed together at one point during the match and give Perkins the discus five arm for the win. So, unreal match. Too bad the crowd sucked during it. They were live for the first part, and then they kind of just snoozed along. I go, why do you snooze? It's the way you, when you go to the cities, like it, you try to build a division up, but then when you go to towns like this, you, you can't get people's attention, the people behind it, because they don't care. They're just casuals. Like, oh, where's Roman Reigns? I give a fuck about anything else. I just want to see Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. It's, honestly, it's terrible. So Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Try uh, not to roast your boy as much this week. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh... Kalisto versus Braun Strowman in the hashtag dumpster fire match. So Kalisto actually looked a little bit all right for the most part in the beginning. He he, he got some moves on Braun Strowman, which is shocking. 
I think you're going to let him do that. Match, though, I'm like... The dumpster was at beside or at ringside. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like on stage. I thought like he, you would have to drag your opponent far enough, you know, to up to the stage. That's why I thought there was no way that the <laughs> Kalista was going to be able to lift Braun into a dumpster. Yeah. But, but uh, something else side. happened. Uh, we get the most cringe thing ever, honestly. I was like, no, no. Braun tries to lift Kalisto into the dumpster. He escapes it, and he's on the other side of the ropes, and it drop kicks Strowman's legs. And Strowman, like, kind of leaps into the dumpster. <laughs> I'm like, what? So, Kalisto won? <laughs> this is horrible. Wow. Honestly, it was terrible. Strowman made... just stood up in the garbage. So that's going to go down the books as Kalisto beating Braun Strowman in a dumpster match. Oh, shit. Uh, Strowman pissed off, attacks Kalisto, puts him in the dumpster, locks it up, and then throws the dumpster off the stage. Um, but t- typical WWE. This is typical. Doing stuff they've already done before. If you guys don't remember, the New Age Outlaws did it to Terry Funk way back in the Attitude Era. And pretty sure Terry Funk, that when he's in the, it was a bigger stage. He had a bigger fall than Kalisto did. The stage is not as high as it used to be anymore. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, uh, it was okay. I mean, it was padded inside, obviously. But then they had the whole stretcher thing with Kalisto, and you know, Kalisto was right back to catering. We're not going to see him for weeks now. Um, it is storyline, folks. He's yeah, not he's not actually, actually hurt. Everyone relax, calm your tits. Uh, next, oh, Dana Brooke versus Alicia Fox. Oh, yeah. How what we, a barn burner this was. How exciting. Wow. Uh, it Mike, was, pro- I think it was a minute long. <laughs> uh, Michael and, Chow puts Braun is feuding with Roman, and he gets beaten by Kalisto right before the pay-per-view. What the hell yeah. is going on here? But, I mean, he destroyed Kalisto afterwards. I mean, he took him in the dumpster and threw him off the stage. Oh, it looks so dominant against a cruiserweight. Basically, Braun Strowman, man, what competition? Competition. He's getting buried by Roman. It, it, I can just see it. Yeah, now. let's get on to the most exciting part of Raw: Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox. Oh man, minute long match. Dana Brooke botched a Oof. Mishinoku driver. Wow, I gotta go back and watch this. This is exciting. And and she won off the botched Mishinoku driver. It's oh, a minute so, long match. So that should be ten out of ten. That's yeah, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna be on a ten something later. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not gonna be ten out of ten. And after we get Emma hugging Dana after the match, I guess to rekindle their friendship on the former protege. No, I'm Dana wasn't really having any of it. Like yeah. Emma just kind of came in and hugged yeah. her, and Dana was so like, "So we're gonna move on from that." Yeah, um, it was. It doesn't deserve a minute of time. Yeah, Enzo and Cass and Seth Rollins versus the Samoa Joe and the Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe and the, the club. Samoa Joe. <laughs> uh, he's not my Samoa. Uh, he is my Samoan. Roman is not my Samoan. Anyways. Before the match starts, the heels attack Enzo and Big Cass. Joe pulls Big Cass into the crowd while Anderson and Gallows hit the magic killer on Enzo. And we go cut some commercial break, come back. The angle is out on the stage. It says Enzo was unable to compete. Now he's found <laughs> he's another got- partner for them, and it's Finn Balor. So Enzo is basically a Man, spot Enzo, dummy. Enzo got absolutely destroyed. So he's basically spot. a spot dummy to, to fit ben, Finn Balor into the show. So like Enzo... We got to fit Balor somewhere. So we're going to come out and kick the shit out of you. You're going to take a magic killer, and then you're at it for the night. You can go home. All right. Poor Enzo. Wow. On a three-hour show, it's that you have to fit him that way? Seriously? I actually really enjoyed this. this but it was a good match. They, no, the match was good. I Just the way they did him. Yeah. Like, seriously? No, before the, the match, they cut a promo with all three of them, and it was actually really good. And they did, like, a two-sweet thing with Joe. I actually yeah. really liked it. Yeah. Uh, so the match was good. Uh, Seth Rollins was uh, setting up for a pedigree, but he stops. Kind of looks at everyone and goes, nuh-uh. Not me anymore. And then debuts this new finisher, which he, like, Irish whips you, then brings you back and then knees you straight in the face. And people are, and you got people on Twitter talking, people saying, oh, my God, that's Kenny Omega's signature move, and blah, 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 whatever. It, it is what it is. And why are you complaining? He took Triple H's finishing move, he didn't complain. But then when he takes someone's signature move, you yeah, complain. Who cares? Okay. Kenny Mo- Omega moves, is not in the WWE. Moves have to be reused at some point. Yeah, they always get reused. Fandango is, is a Falcon Arrow. That gets used by everybody. Lebo, people complaining. Anyways, Rollins, Cass, and Balor win. Cool. Move on. Uh, we got an in-ring segment with Alexa Bliss, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. Ooh. Ooh. Alexa Bliss was a savage. You want me to talk this about one. this? You don't want to talk about this? Sure. Uh, fucking Alexa came out. <laughs> and the crowd started chanting what? 
and she's and she just goes, "If are we gonna start with this again? If Alexa Bliss is the best, say what? What? That's what I thought." <laughs> and she just keeps going on about how is, uh, <laughs> Bailey is gonna be in her hometown next next week, and uh, talking about how all these girls come out here and talk about their it's been their childhood dream to be women's champion. And then she like stops. She goes, Sorry, I almost threw up my mouth a little bit. It was just, it was great. And Bailey came out, and sorry, but Bailey's cringe as hell on the mic again, <laughs> saying she's gonna defend in her hometown in front of her dad. And Alexa's laughing because she said she's gonna kick the shit out of Bailey in front of her dad and her in front of her hometown. It was, lo- it was great. I loved it. And then of course, fucking Sasha has to come out and says that the champion or the person with the gold calls the shots. And I'm like. <laughs> Okay. What? <laughs> so she's saying a Bailey would call the shots, and I don't know. It didn't make sense. And then she said, "Well, tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna shut you up." And then Alexa's like, "No, we're not doing that." And she tries walking out of the ring, and, <laughs> and Sasha turns around and hits her with a fucking uh, forearm. <laughs> and then they end up having the match. And I didn't, oh, a match you don't want to see? No, I didn't want to see this match. And if anybody wants to go and look at our new Instagram, I posted a. Hashtag fuck my life Friday. <laughs> yeah, the new there. hashtag. F my life Friday. Uh, Alexa getting drop kicked by Sasha right in the face. So that was my thoughts on this whole thing. And I'm not going to talk about the match because I don't want to talk about it anymore. And uh, Alexa walks out of the ring and leaves. <laughs> and Sasha wins by count out. Yep. Pretty and neat situation there. But Bailey was on commentary, which is cringe on its own. And then she came out or came back and Alexa attacked her. Before yep. she left, but I don't know. I don't think Alexa should have won by countout, especially if she's supposed to look strong going against Bailey. And now there's a v- y- y- your girl Sasha has a countout victory now in the record books over Alexa Bliss. But <laughs> wh- if you're gonna make Alexa the number one contender for the women's title, why wouldn't she have at least won the match some way? Yeah, she literally just walked away. Literally, I, I think I think they did. I think that should have happened. They should have had uh, Alexa Bliss win here, look dominant. Maybe they go over the commentary and beat the shit out of Bailey. They do something. But, yeah, I don't wanna really want to talk about it anymore, but yeah, it is what it is. But I think they they did it the wrong way. I think Alexa should have won by something. Maybe not clean, but yeah, walking away just kind of seemed cheap. But I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll Biasly, take it. I'll take it because yeah. neither of them got pinned or submitted. So, uh, Michael Chow put here, hashtag Michael Chow creative. Storyline-wise, because of the concussion Balor suffered in the Mahal match, during a tag team match, Finn turned on Rollins and Big Cass, turning heel and forming the Balor Club with Anderson and Gallows. That would have been interesting. I thought you got fired from Creative. Already. But he say he, he puts at the end, just got rehired by WWE Creative. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're fine. You want to make? Show. You want to find something for Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox to do? Because yeah, sure please help us okay with that, man. We need some creative juices for that. Anyways. Uh, Kurt Hawkins comes out and cuts another uh, promo like he's been doing the last couple of weeks. Oh, this guy's awful. Gets answered by Paulo Cruz. They have a quick match. Paulo Cruz showcased for some reason. Uh, after the match, Titus O'Neil comes out to congratulate Apollo <laughs> Cruz and like uh, promoting the Titus brand. They even take like a selfie. But apparently, it looked like Apollo was getting behind it a little bit. I think this is actually going to come to fruition here. And I could get behind the Titus brand thing. I think it's a good way. What else is Apollo going to do? What else is Titus O'Neil going to do? If it means putting both these guys on TV, fucking do it. You got to fill three hours of Raw anyways. Do it. Just do it. I can get behind it. I love Apollo Crews. I've loved him since day one. I hope this is a way to get him more on TV. Get him on TV instead of Titus. They could do something like a Titus brand. Like he's like the manager. Like he's like his agent, right? And Apollo's just like this cocky, like, like superstar athlete, right? And he, you know, he doesn't, they can do like stuff where like he walks by fans and they ask for autographs. He just says no. You know what I mean? He could be like this really cocky heel kind of Titus brand kind of guy, right? You know what I mean? I I think they could definitely do that with Apollo Crews. What he's doing right now isn't working. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chow says I'll find something for Dana Botch and Alicia Fox by the end of the podcast. <laughs> okay. Oh. Thank you, Michael Chow. <laughs> uh, move on to the main event. The main event, Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose versus The Miz. And The Miz had to find a partner throughout the night. And then at one point in the night, he said he had one. God. And when Miz tries to introduce his partner, no one comes out. So Angle comes out and says there is no one. He didn't find anyone. He's lying to us. And then Miz must now compete in the handicap match. <laughs> She has to pull a fast one. I'm in. like, what the hell is going on here? I'm like, okay, if at this point, I'm like, okay, someone's definitely got to come out here. It's the main event. They got to do something big. They, they had the match. 
I'm like, what the fuck the is going on here? handicap match. Like, they're just beating up on the Miz throughout the match. Miz got some little offense here and there, teasing the Daniel Bryan bullshit. And then uh, tries to leave up the ramp. Ambrose attacks him, sets him up on the table, and the lights go out. I'm like, okay, so finally something's going to happen. But I'm like, wait a minute, Bray Wyatt? What the fuck is Bray Wyatt out here for? What's he got to do with all these guys? He's just such a close He, he appears, he attacks Dean Ambrose for some weird reason, and then gives him a sister Abigail on the stage. You think he's going to start attacking Miz, which he should have, but he doesn't. He yells at Miz to go get Chris Jericho. Miz goes to the ring, gets in the ring, gets code breakered right away. The Jericho turns around to his sister Abigail, and we end the show off with uh, Bray Wyatt over Chris, Jer- over Chris Jericho. What does he have to do with Chris Jericho? They're like mixing all these feuds together. It makes this, no sense. And this brings a point to where I forget what someone said, and I don't remember where I read it, and why aren't the people crossing over for these... Your, your feuds are cross-branded right now going into Payback. Why not cross-brand? Just go cross-brand just for now. That's what Payback is right now. That's why Payback should be a double-branded pay-per-view. But it's not. We get this bullshit at the end of Raw. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. <laughs> like, why, why was this the main event? Why, why is Bray Wyatt attacking Ambrose and Jericho when he's facing Orton, who's also in a feud with Jinder Mahal... And then and Chris Bray... Jericho's in a feud with Kevin Owens. It's like, holy fuck, it's like a whole tree. And then Chris Jericho's leaving, and then they're saying Bray Wyatt's feeding with Finn Balor. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is a go-home show, and you end with that shit? Holy <laughs> crap, payback's going to be god-awful. Oh, my God. I ain't even here in the House of Horrors match. I ain't even going to start in the ring. I'm going to get the fucking Wyatt compound shit again. <laughs> oh, the... The, what do you call the it? The New Day, that bullshit? No, the thing in the ring, what do you call it? Oh, the... CGI? Yeah. Oh, man, I hope not. <laughs> Anyways. What a clusterfuck to end Raw. Wow. So Raw has some highlight points and some clearly dumpster points. So I gave it a 3 out of 10, a low rating this week. Because the 3 went to the stuff I liked. Maybe, you know, the Hardys, the the, the Club and Smoke Joe part. And Apollo Crew, I gave it a three, man. Just that's it. It's it's straight rating of a three. That's it. Greg says, "Will payback be worse than Fastlane?" I think it will. To be honest, it doesn't look good. Uh, uh-uh. I'll be intrigued for the tag team match for the titles, and that's it. I don't want to see Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. It's gonna be. You, we know what's gonna happen. I can tell. I'm. I'm okay. I'm tell you guys right now. Here's. I'm calling it right now. You hear it here first. Braun Strowman is going to look dominant for like the first half of the match, and we're going to get Roman Reigns to come back, and he's going to beat Braun Strowman clean. 100%. 100% that's going to happen. And that's going to end the show off. Yep. You know when the main... Oh, my God. And then Brock Lesnar isn't even there as the main champion. Yeah. It's pretty so th- sad. I gave it 3 out of 10. That's it. Let me look here. <laughs> I have to give it a, a true rating here. <laughs> oh, a true rating. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. It's a 1 for the Cruiserweight Tag Team match. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that, too. Uh, I'm still giving it a three. It gets a one for Alexa Bliss's promo slash match, I guess. And I'll give a half point to Matt Hardy's yes in the middle of the yes. match. So it gets two and a half. It's so, a raw. Raw. Gets a three out of ten. What are you getting? Two and a half? Two and a half. Yeah. It's a, de- it's a good score. It's, it's all deserves this week. That's pretty much it, and that's all I'm going to say about it. So we're going to move right on to the blue brand. SmackDown. From the Wells Fargo Arena. Oh my god. In Des Moines, Iowa. Cricket, do we have, do we Iowa. Have a cricket? Uh, I got I gotta I gotta get that the sound effect in. I'm gonna get some more sound yeah, effects we for the podcast. Cricket. Um got another Michael Chow creative before we get into the SmackDown review. A reverse Elias Samson sit- <laughs> situation. A payback, Emma challenges Dana Brooke to a loser leaves raw match. Dana Brooke loses and goes to back to NXT. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. And Alicia Fox gets a, uh, acquired by the Titus brand and forms a new stable <laughs> with Titus O'Neil, Apollo Crews, and Alicia Fox. <laughs> Take it all in, man. You know what? I'd rather that than what they're doing <laughs> oh now. Oh, my God. I'd rather them send Dana back to NXT where she needs to get some season. I don't, I don't know what the rest, but I like that first idea. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, oh, what man. is going on with the blue brand the last two Oh, weeks? man, especially this week. I felt bad for Nakamura this week. We're in Des Moines, Iowa. You made the list, Des Moines, of shittiest crowds ever. Wow, were you quiet. If there's ever a casual a casual hell, it is Des Moines, Iowa. God. <laughs> 
So the opening segment, we start off with Shinsuke Nakamura. There was maybe five people singing his theme song in that whole arena. You know what's bad? When the theme song itself is louder than the crowd. God, you know you're in Casual Central. Holy fucking shit, dude. This was bad. So it, it, Shinsuke Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler are coming out. Ziggler starts making fun of Nakamura, looking like Michael Jackson and making fun of his Japanese language. Now, Nakamura tries talking to Ziggler, but Ziggler just kind of like interrupts him a lot. And, you know, Z- Nakamura's doing this oh, thing. In the ring. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Here, it was getting, it was getting cringe and cringe by the minute. And finally, uh, Nakamura starts talking. And he, he, at one point, he starts talking Japanese. And at the end of it, he calls Ziggler a jackass. And Ziggler gets pissed off and tries to attack Nakamura, but he gets inverted, suplexed, and then knock- and Ziggler runs away. Uh, it's Nakamura going the come on thing, and I guess it's it's slow build. It's a slow build for their match at Backlash. I understand that you 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 have almost now a month and a half away till Backlash, but it gives zero excuse to give us bullshit like this from Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> uh. The Crickets, Iowa. More like it. It should have been in Davenport. At Jesus, least Seth Murphy. When he got some pop. This was bad. Uh, I get, I know why they're keeping Nakamura off TV for some point because they want his his whole gimmick and his whole persona to be special when he shows up. Yeah. But then when the crowd doesn't even sing, the yeah. Song, but then when you go to Des Moines, Iowa, and you get everyone watching at home, how are you gonna get the people that are watching at home when they finally go see it to get behind it? When you get in Des Moines, Iowa, this is a week where they should have kept them off TV and put a promo package. Not like last week. You gotta put him. You gotta bring him out to a crowd that's actually gonna be hyped. Like New York, Philly, like all the big. Uh, we, we know the crowds that are loud. We know it's just bad. Anyway, we're gonna move on. AJ Styles was Corbin, which I argue should have been the main event, not the women's match. I don't think they're ready for a main event level yet. Um, decent match. Owens tries to distract Styles at one point. Styles kicks him away. He misses the phenomenal four. And Corbin tries a power bomb, but gets rolled up for, from Styles, and Styles wins on a roll up. Interesting. I liked it. Uh, I like the match. I like the ending too. Always then, yeah, look weak. yeah, it does. Hundred percent, and it's good because you're grooming Corbin to be this next top heel champion. You can't be losing clean. Can't be losing clean like that. Uh, Owens jumps Styles after the match, and then Corbin jumps in to help. Zayn comes out for the save. Uh, at one point, Zayn tries to haluva kick on Corbin, but jumps, uh, but gets jumped by Owens before he could do it. Uh, Owens kicks the crap out of Zayn, then pop up power bomb Styles to end the segment. This is the way you make the champion look strong. Right here. Why this is what. This is how you get someone to look strong. Right here. Why was this not the ending of SmackDown? This should have been the ending of SmackDown. I, I can't believe this. Is, I get clusterfucked. It's like they didn't know what to do. It's like they had the script given to them for the show, and it wasn't even organized. Like, oh yeah, let's just throw it out there. It's good. It's good enough. Taking lessons from Raw. God. Anyways, it's a good segment. Again, sad it wasn't the main event. Nothing much but else you can say about it. Styles and Corbin, another good match, and yep. it doesn't make Corbin look weak again. He mm-hmm. lost by count out last week, and he yep. lost by a roll up this week. And so. again, it's showing that Corbin can hang with the big guys, and is is slowly grooming into that he should be in the main event for good now. So it's good. I love what they're doing with Corbin, and I I also love it because I'm a day one Corbin fan. It also and makes me feel. I wish good. this was for the main title. This whole feud, not the. The U.S. title, but that's one thing too. Like I get so confused, and I, I argue about it every single day, and I talk to other people about it too, and I'm like, why the hell is the U.S. title not with Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton? Why are they doing the WWE title? No one's gonna give a shit about that match. You can make Jinder Mahal run away the title like he did to this show. No one's gonna give a fuck. You put Owens, Corbin, and Styles in the mid card. I don't understand what's going on. Again, the shake up literally shook up some stuff the bad way. <laughs> Are they really trying to make the U.S. title look stronger than the world title? I honestly don't think so. I honestly think they made a mistake and they're just kind of rolling with it. That's it. <laughs> wow. Anyways. Uh, it's probably one of the only good parts of SmackDown. Yeah. When American Alpha faced the Colognes in a Beat the Clock Challenge, so basically it was announced before SmackDown there was going to be a Beat the Clock Challenge tag team uh, Two matches, and the winner would uh, the winner of the beat the clock challenge will be the number one contender for the tag titles. Um, American Alpha and Colognes, decent match, nothing too special. American Alpha hit a grand amplitude out of nowhere and won at five seventeen. So the time to beat for the other match was five minutes and seventeen seconds. At least the Colognes look better than what they have as the shining stars. Yeah, I again, like we we said it before, we can get behind the Colognes when they're built like this. I know they lost the match, but. They're they're being more they're more credible than they were on they're on catering on Raw now they're actually getting time they've been on every single SmackDown since debuting so I like what they're doing the clones I like I really like it 
Um, I wouldn't doubt that they interfere, uh, or maybe they start a feud with American Alpha after this. Um, move on. Or right, Michael Chow puts, what are your thoughts on both shows' authority figures now being baby faces? Ooh, that's for actually now, for now until Steph, Steph comes back. Comes back. We'll and see what knows, happens. I could see Angle turning eventually. Yeah. Uh, and there, where where was the authority figure this week on SmackDown? By the way, was Shane not there? Neither of them were there. Oh, maybe Shane was busy, and we are know where you know where Daniel Bryan is. He's with Bree because the baby's coming any minute now. So yeah, and we had JBL on Talking Smack instead. Which, you know, that's a great choice. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Rusev, we got a pre-recorded message oh from Rusev. God. Why? And he talks about hating the shake-up. Which that was the one thing I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, he hates Daniel Bryan. He hates the McMahons. He demands a championship match at Money in the Bank. And this was due because his injury is uh, his injury time is slated till then. Um, he's supposed to be out till Money in the Bank time. Or else he'll go back to Bulgaria. He won't wrestle for SmackDown. All right, see ya. Uh, but why are they promoting a pay per view that's not even the next pay per view? I don't know. It makes no. Why wouldn't they just have this little promo package thing after? I the think. Payback? I think that we're not going to see. Sorry, I don't think we're going to get anything of, for Rusev until like at, near backlash. Now I don't think we're not going to see Rusev for like three weeks now. I know, but like, why didn't they just wait to put that then? Yeah, they should have, but they already did. And the kind of you know, it's another one of those things that would be just fires the gun too early. Why are we looking at pay per views like three months down the road already? I think again, the only the only reason is my it, that's when he's coming back. They should have saved it for at least at backlash. This this match should have been the at backlash, or maybe he should have came out during backlash and yeah, had like an in ring promo. Yeah, have this segment at backlash. And just started just jumping sense. the gun once again. They just don't know what to do. Um, move on. Eric Rowan for oh Randy Orton. Again. Wow, another exciting match. <laughs> Eric Rowan and Randy Orton again. <laughs> this is why I watch SmackDown live. Okay, they use weapons. Sure, great. Uh, Rowan got owned by a table spot. Orton then gets owned by a steel step spot. Rowan tries to throw Orton into a place turnbuckle chair. Orton reverses it into the RKO, and he wins. Blah, 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 blah. Same uh, old shit. Same old shit. Anyways, uh, Ray Orton tries to cut a promo after about the House of Horrors. Uh, Juicer Mahal comes out and interrupts him. Uh, gets pissed that he's being overlooked. You're being overlooked, right, Jinder? You're the number one fucking contender. How are you overlooked? How are you overlooked? Sorry, you're getting the number one contendership when you have the worst win-loss record of anyone on that roster, and you're getting the number one contender. How are you overlooked? Sorry he has a match on Sunday with someone else. Unfucking believable um, uh, Michael Chow puts, Rusev's reason for not being around was dumb. He's not... He, he's been gone since the Rumble before the Superstar shakeup. so where would, where was he before then? Hashtag plot holes. No, he got you no. Know, he was beaten down at Fastlane by Big Show. Remember? Oh yeah, but then they they kind of didn't build off that either. They kind of left that alone. <laughs> anyway, God for that. So Mahal's pissed for being overlooked for some reason. He says Orton shouldn't be worried about Bray Wyatt because he is the true horror. Ooh. <laughs> Look at his veins. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the true horror. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think I put my needles? Anyways, he rants about having more class. I, for one thing, Mahal. To me, is cringe on the mic. He doesn't have mic presence at all. He just sounds boring and robotic. Robotic. It's almost like it's a Randy Orton 2.0. Um, <laughs> so we got two boring guys going against each other. That's going to make an exciting match. Uh, he rants about having more class, culture, and wealth and talent than anyone in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And says Orton disrespects him just because he looks different. <laughs> well, yeah. I wonder why you look different. His new diet. Yeah, he says he feels disrespected because Orton Orton's ang- arrogance and his lack of tolerance, but it will take back his respect at Backlash. Ooh. So Mahal tries to take a cheap shot on the champion, but Orton sees it coming. They brawl, and Orton tries a hangman DDT, but the Bollywood boys run out and make the save for their uh, leader, sorry, the Singh brothers. And Jinder hits a Cobra Clutch Slam and walks away with the WWE Championship. So they're doing this thing now with Jinder Mahal stealing the WWE Championship. And I actually think, so apparently, or I don't think, it actually was released. I read this news today. So Jinder Mahal stole the title belt this week, ladies and gentlemen. Because that's how Derby is trying to... Uh, Eliminate. Trying to... Uh, no, just trying to what am I looking match. for? No, they're trying to... Cover up. Cover up why it's not for the WWE title. 
Because this, they made this reason right here, because Mahal stole it. Oh, he stole my title. Can't be for the title. Can't, <laughs> can't have a title match with you, Bray. I'm sorry. Mahal stole it. I don't know where the hell he went. I lost him. <laughs> He's lost. Wow. He's out buying more needles. Sorry, man. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, the Ascension versus Brazongo, or the Fashion Police, whatever they like to be called. And the other Beat the Clock Challenge. The time to beat is 5 minutes, 17 seconds. Decent match. At the 247 mark, Tyler Breeze gives Victor a super kick behind the rest back. And Vendango hits the Falcon Arrow for the win. So it Holy crap. Close. Brazongo is the number one contender. It wasn't even. It was like half the the time of the other match. Yeah, they didn't even make it close. There's only two of these beat the clock matches. We're not even gonna make it close. We're not gonna make it like with five seconds. Make it more dramatic for them. Not enough, Brazongo. We're not giving you that much time. You're gonna be number one tenor, but we're giving you like two minutes out there. <laughs> That's it. The ascension. Yeah. Good for them getting. B- b- but you know what? Again. Whatever. Brazongo, we've been demanding them to be getting pushed for a while now. I guess they're... F- are they going to be they face? That's what I mean. I, and I look at this now and I'm going, okay, who's going to become the face? We're not going to get the old Usos back. They're too good as heels. So is Brazongo face? Like, what are we... The Fashion Police gimmick is not a face tweener. gimmick. The Fashion Police gimmick is not a face gimmick. We, I think they're doing this because they know they can get a face reaction out of the Chicago crowd because they know Chicago's going to cheer the fuck out of the, the Brazongo. So and then they can just be heels right after it. So tweener, like you said, but good for Brazongo finally getting a shot. But yeah. we'll see. I don't think they're gonna win the titles, but yeah, at least uh, them getting a pay per view match. Good for them. Michael Chow puts pushing Kalisto, pushing Steroid Mahal, pushing Rusev at Money in the Bank. Is Vince trying to promote the WWE to national fans, destroying the WWE? If you agree, say what exactly. <laughs> That's uh, a great line. So we move on in the main event. So we're already in the main event. So quick show. Main events. Naomi versus Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's Championship match. So Charlotte main events another show. If you look at her career, she's been what, on the main roster for like three, two, three years now. And she's already been like six-time women's champion. She's main evented two shows in a row. Three maybe. Like main shows. God, man. They're just shoving everything at her. Why? There's no. She has to be the quickest woman ever to get all these accomplishments in the quickest amount of time. Unbelievable. Anyways, it was a good match. It was a good match. Then uh, the end of it sucked. I hated it. Natalia, Carmella, and Tamina come out. Cringe Mina. Cringe lo- Cringe Talia and Carmella. With Cringeworth. With Cringeworth. <laughs> <laughs> Interfere, <laughs> causing a DQ. All right. Wow. So they so, finally attacked her after last... Remember last yeah, week they did nothing. They did nothing. Oh, we're going to wait till next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll wait next week. Anyways, beat up both women... <laughs> And that's how we end SmackDown. Fucking disgusting, man. So horrible <laughs> way to end. So Two, we're get- both ways, both shows ended like terribly. So we're getting a, a Charlotte face turn. It looks like. Oh, because she tweeted after saying, "I am now I face. Them. I love the WWE universe. You guys are all my friends." And oh, that's gonna be Becky cringe. Why is Charlotte face? She's a bad. She's gonna be the worst face ever. She's not a face. She's a heel. She's a perma heel. Oh my god, the two paws crew, Craig says. Yeah, it's the fucking two paws crew. Oh it's my bad. lord. The, the SmackDown women's division, I'm not liking it right now. No, I gave SmackDown a two out of ten. They lost this week to Raw, barely. Why wouldn't they just keep Becky as the main face of SmackDown? Where was she? I know. Now the rumored backlash match is those three against Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky. So Charlotte is clearly turning face. Fucking why? <laughs> why is she face? Why don't? Why couldn't they turn Natalia face instead and have her just stay here? Oh my God! It was garbage. I'm surprised. Oh. Mike Johnson, the chan- the fans were chanting. I was surprised the fans are chanting in Des Moines, cringe Iowa. God, it's just off. Oh, SmackDown's terrible. Shit, fuck this crap. I'm done talking about SmackDown. It pissed me off. Two out of ten. That's it. That's it. Yep. That's I'm, it. I'm giving it two out of ten. So Raw wins by a .5. Raw by barely. What you a can't terrible even call week. It a winner. What a terrible week. They both lost. There's no excuse. What happened? It was Before like WrestleMania, home. we had we are critics for Raw. Okay, SmackDown was always a good show, but Raw still was better than what it is now. But both shows now are just worse. Both are fucking terrible than the way it used to be. SmackDown the last two weeks has been like laughable bad. Man, like SmackDown has been worse than what Raw was before WrestleMania. That's terrible. Pick your shit up, WB. And this and Ra, you don't get a pass either because this is your go home show before a pay per view, and this yeah. is bad too. Unbelievable. So I'm done talking about that. We're just gonna move right into the next segment of the show, and that is the list of ten. Ten. You know what? 
You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the list of 10, the part of the show where we go over our top moments. Throughout the week here in the WWE, we have a give it a list, or so we give it a list of ten, or a, we give it a ten rating, or we give it a list moment. And there's a lot of list moments I can tell you that right now You're all fired for up. this week, and I'm all fired up. I'm freaking botching right now because I'm so pissed off at how bad WWE was. But that is the segment of the show, guys, where we do our top moments of the week. So we we'll start off as always, corporate Cappy. You just made the list to Braun seriously losing the dumpster match to Kalisto. <laughs> Why? Before his big match with the big dog, where he's going to get... A big or, match with the his, big dog. His buried alive match with the big dog. Oh, God. And he goes in and loses a dumpster match to Kalisto. I know he kicked the crap out of him afterwards and threw him in the dumpster and threw him off the stage. But still, why does he have to lose the match? He should have won it in the minute. It shouldn't have even been a, a seven-minute match, whatever it was. He should have instantly thrown him in there. It just made Braun look bad. And I don't know why they do this with him, but for Braun losing that dumpster match to Kalisto. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chow put, should have kept the rosters and do the draft in the summer as scheduled. Michael Chow, actually, I'm hearing where there might actually be another draft. There might actually be a draft year. before the end of this year. So This whole superstar shakeup thing was dumb. Yeah, it was. It was a waste. Literally a waste. They shouldn't have done it. Should have just kept the rosters, but whatever. Uh, my first moment is a list moment. That is, oh, where, oh, where is Ty Dillinger? <laughs> Two weeks now without the perfect 10. Where the hell is he? Is he on vacation? Where the fuck is he? Why, why is there a reason to keep Ty Dillinger off TV? What, so you can show bullshit like we saw this week? All right, that makes sense. Terrible way of trying to get this guy over. He needs a fuse soon, or I don't know what's going to happen. But for SmackDown not putting Ty Dillinger on TV... You know what? You just made the list! Yes. A lot of list moments this week. Yeah, but there should be. Uh, I'm going to go into a 10 moment, and that is Brazongo becoming number one contender. I'm happy for these guys. Uh, I've been saying for a long time, these guys definitely have talent. Even as singles competitors, these two guys are really, really good. Um, they've finally been given a shot to prove themselves on SmackDown instead of just being this dumpster fire backstage fashion police crap and <laughs> the, the golden truth feud and all that crap, so... Uh, for Brazongo finally getting their skills shown. Ten. They get a ten. They get a ten. A yeah, nice so ten. Good for them. They were probably one of the the only good parts of SmackDown this week, even though the match was only two minutes long. But... Yeah. Hmm. Michael Chow, they should be. They're going to be doing the the draft every month at this rate. <laughs> uh, where's the pasty white aid in English? Craig says. <laughs> I don't know. Singing somewhere. Yeah, singing in the back room. Anyways, my next moment is a list moment. Again, there's going to be a lot, guys. Brace yourselves. And that is to Michael Cole falling asleep on Raw this week. If you missed it, the freaking gif in the video went around Twitter. I know it looked like he was kind of looking at a monitor, but I think he was falling asleep. His eyes were closed. It looked like he was snoozing. Very, very unprofessional, Michael Cole. Supposed to be a good example, unlike HBK at the Hall of Fame, where he fell asleep. I know Raw is way too long, but come on. Whether he was looking at the screen below him or not, Michael Cole. You know what? You just made the list. It just looked bad, especially when they were the camera was looking at them. Like yeah, that was a bad time for Michael Cole to be looking down. Or if he was sleeping, ugh, he got caught, bro. Yeah. Next list moment goes to Orton versus Rowan again. <laughs> again. Why this match sucked the first time? Why do we need to see it again? They added a few weapons and it was still bad. Oh. So, Eric Rowan, I don't know what they're going to do with this guy, but he is not a singles competitor. I am i can't get behind Eric Rowan as a singles guy. They should have kept him with Bray Wyatt. And Orton's just getting boring, too. I mean, you've, uh, you've said that a lot. So, Orton versus Eric Rowan again. You know what? You just made the list! <laughs> why? Just why? I don't know. It... <laughs> I don't know what to do, Eric Rowan. If there's the rumor that the guy they signed from TNA and if they're going to do something with him, and uh, who knows? Uh, Michael Chavez, do you believe it's going to straight up be Usos versus Brazongo backlash? They still have a whole month. I believe somehow they'll throw American Alpha or in the Colognes. Fail four way for the tag titles? Maybe. We'll see. Current rumor is just one on one, though, so we'll see what happens. 
I went down if they did it one-on-one, Michael Chow, man. I'd rather you know Brazongo's going to get a huge reaction. I don't think they need to do more than uh, a multiple-team match. But who knows? Everybody changes their minds every goddamn second, so who knows? Um, my next moment goes to the WWE ring crew, and it's a 10 moment. They get a 10. They're the only good part on Raw. One of them. For their fast takedown of all three setups from all three superstars in the same segment. Truly shows that they are the fastest production team in the world. You should see how they take down a show after it is done when you're actually there. They do it so goddamn fast. Or they can, or how they, they change the, the ring and stuff and, the, and they, they, they take the ropes up for the cruiserweight matches. It's, it's crazy, man. They're so quick. And the commercials are only 30 seconds long, man. They got to do it within that span. It's nuts. So the Darby Ring Crew, you guys get a perfect. Ten. Yeah. You just see what they do, like when you're at an event, and how how much it takes for them to take down this, all the stuff, the stage, everything, and then they move it from town to town. Like, yeah. I, I dare you to find like a better and faster and efficient Ring Crew yeah. out there, or crew out there. If you can, I'm just gonna tell you you're wrong because I know they're fast. They're the fastest in the world. Have to be. Uh, your next uh, I got two more. We got. Uh, I'll end off with a list because it was bad this week. So my last ten moment was the Alexa Bliss promo. Obviously. Yep. Obviously. Alexa, Alexa Bliss just played with the crowd the whole time. It was fantastic. Alexa Bliss is the best. Say what? What? <laughs> yeah, I agree. So Alexa Bliss is great heel promo on Raw gets a perfect ten. It does. It does. She was. I think it was really good. I think with her doing promos. I feel like she's uh, she for one she's a great actor, really or actress sorry really really good actress. Um, her thing I don't know if it's true or not the beef that she has with uh, Sasha Banks. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts around that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but I think I think she can be really good. At, uh, I think she's still carrying. Can good. she be the top person for that division? Well, and, it looks like it right now, and then until Sasha turns heel, or you know, Paige comes back, but you know, yeah, I'm really <laughs> that. but Bailey, like she, she's carrying that feud with Bailey right now because Bailey's promos are just bad. I, I don't understand how they're not letting her do the stuff clearly that she's in that she did in NXT. Uh, she doesn't sound the same for one. Her moves in the ring have been look like they've been watered down, so I don't know. It's just. I mean, Alexa's doing a great job, and Rob wanted her over there because SmackDown built her as a star, and now she's a star on Raw. Yeah. But. Who knows? Anyway. Anyways. My next moment, and I have, my two moments are lists. So, <laughs> I don't have any other ten moments. <laughs> Anyways, my next one. Des Moines, Iowa crowd during Nakamura's entrance. Crickets. There was maybe five people singing his theme in that whole crowd out of, like, 18,000, whatever there was in there. You know what's bad? when you Again, like I said, you can hear the theme music over the crowd. You know you're crickets. Just saying. Um, uh, again, yeah, like I said the same thing. I have the same thing written what I did in the review. It's a shame. It's such a shame because Nakamura is such an incredible individual like we said before. And you know what? Just for that, you make the list. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, that's it. So, Des Moines has been added to the list with Charlotte, North Carolina, Little Rock, Arkansas, Los Angeles, California, Memphis, Tennessee, and Green Bay, Wisconsin. Memphis. Those are the list of bad crowds. If you guys can think of any more crowds, let me know and I'll put them on the list. Yeah, please let us know if you know any any of your bad crowds. Uh, I forgot to give a shout-out to Chris Jericho's new jacket as an honorable mention 10. <laughs> that thing is gorgeously bad. Yep. 100%. Uh, and my last list moment goes to Dana Botch. Dana Botch. Botch Michinoku right. Driver on Alicia Fox. If you guys haven't seen this, I recommend you don't because it was not good. No, it was she bad. She tried the Michinoku Driver, and Alicia Fox is already on the ground before Dana Brooke did her sit-down part. It was just <laughs> badly coordinated, yep. badly done, and Dana Brooke weekly, you know what? You know what? You just made the list. So true. You need it was to go so back bad. to NXT. Your promos are bad. Your in-ring work is bad. Yeah. Everything is bad. Yeah. It's Unfortunately. Bad. It's B-A-D. Bad. Yeah. Team, she, her and Alicia should make their own team bad, but they're actually yeah. like legit They're actually bad. bad. Yeah. So we'll get into my last list moment. My moment is the list moment, like I just said. To, and it goes to Raw and SmackDown, both shows in their entirety. <laughs> 
Both shows completely disappointed me this week, and they just sucked. Both shows were terrible, especially for Rob being a go-home show. That was horrible. That was cringe. SmackDown feels like it's so watered down and lazy, and you got a month in, you got a month almost to your, your pay-per-view. There's no excuse for lack of building. So no excuses, WWE. For that, both shows. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, just make the list. They did. They sucked. And Talking Smack... Uh, we should talk about that oh, briefly. Oh, yeah. So, Talking Smack, JBL on there, sure. Uh, and then uh, Dean a- or not Dean Ambrose. Uh, Corbin jumps uh, Sami Zayn on Talking Smack. And then after, I guess, uh, Shane McMahon took to Twitter, he is suspended, uh, storyline suspended. Uh, Barry Corbin for a week and also find an undisclosed amount. I liked Corbin attacking yeah. Zayn on... Uh... Yeah, I'm talking. That was better than SmackDown because SmackDown sucked this week. And they had Becky on there too, and they were asking why she wasn't a part of it. And she said, "Well, I'm tired of everyone stabbing me in the back, so I'm not helping anyone anymore." What a shitty reason! That's not a good enough reason, Becky. And Becky's supposed to be the top face on SmackDown, yet they're turning Charlotte face to become the top face and leaving Becky in on the back burner. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Sure. Let's hope it improves starting Wait, next dumpster week. Dumpster fire, yeah, garbage. Dumpster fire. Anyways, let's get into the last part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. That is the WWE headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE headlines, ladies and gentlemen. That part of the show, where we go over WWE news and rumors. That are related to that in the WWE. We have some news for you, ladies and gentlemen. We got some news. And I got a chat message here. So I'm going to make sure it's nothing of importance for me to go over. Why isn't it letting me go down? Oh, it's just Greg. It says DIY got called up to surprise the fans. Oh, that'd be cool if DIY got called up. Anyways, WWE headlines. Number one. WWE expanding to the Philippines. WWE and TV5 today and or yesterday announced new agreement to broadcast WWE's flagship show SmackDown in the Philippines on TV5 beginning this a- Sunday, April 30th. Every week, TV5 will televise one hour edition of SmackDown on Sunday at 3 p.m. Fans will be able to follow their favorite WWE superstars on SmackDown, including AJ Styles, The New Day, Randy Orton, Charlotte Flair, Shinsuke Nakamura, Kevin Owens, and Naomi. I'm guessing it's only one hour because they probably cut all the commercials out. Um, Ed Wells, WWE Executive Vice President of International, said this new partnership to televise SmackDown showcases the continuing global growth of WWE while creating a destination of WWE fans in the Philippines to enjoy our unique blend of action-packed family fun entertainment. Oh, God. Yes, a very corporate uh, headline there. Uh, big for them. You know, maybe yeah. they can inspire a young kid to come from the Philippines one day become a superstar. Yeah. Who knows? We already have uh, what is their guy that I think would be we're watching, TJ Perkins. I wish they should show 205 Live over there, man. I think, isn't TJ Perkins? Uh, yeah, he's got Filipino descent. They could get behind him, but who knows? We'll but see. So good for the Philippines. For them. They're yeah. expanding everywhere, it seems yeah. like. And they got an hour of SmackDown, un- un- tele- or uncommercialized. Can I have that instead? Yeah, please. And it's on Sunday, so that's that's a good day. I yeah, mean. right before a pay-per-view, too. Interesting. Uh, next, Money in the Bank betting odds have been released already. While the WWE's annual Money in the Bank pay-per-view doesn't take place until June 18th, the folks at BetWrestling.com feel it's never too early to speculate on which superstar will come out of the event holding the coveted briefcase. BetWrestling.com have been pretty close with their betting odds in the past, as well as predicting lots of championship outcomes. Anyways, let's get into the betting odds. Money in the Bank 2017. Number one. These are going from uh, best odds to worst odds. Number one, Baron Corbin leads the way. Number two is interesting. Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm. Interesting. Can you imagine him winning Money in the Bank and holding it until like WrestleMania next year? Mm. Kevin Owens is at number three. AJ Styles, four. Sami Zayn, five. Rusev, six. John Cena and Randy Orton are tied at 7. Mojo Raleigh at 8. Dolph Ziggler at 9. Big E, Ty Dillinger are tied at 10. 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very pun there. Very punly. Kane and Luke... Or Kane is above Luke Harper and Zack Ryder. Kane? Kane. He's running for mayor of yeah. Knoxville County. And then Jinder Mahal is last. 
Jinder's last, but yeah. he's, the, he's the number one contender, contender but he's the, the worst title. odds. He's got the worst oh odds. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think maybe the site thinks he's going to win the title. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Now we'll move on. Other new news on Vince McMahon's movie being made. The life of Vince McMahon will be subject of a major motion picture, and it'll be titled Pandemonium, which is expected to be distributed by TriStar Pictures. The idea of a McMahon movie is dated back to last summer, according to The Hollywood Reporter, and is being shopped around at the time. The story, said the, the story said that the script, written by Craig A. Williams, was viewed well, but Darby and McMahon were not on board, nor had any control, and the studios didn't want to get into an, an inevitable fight over how McMahon would want to be portrayed. Um, Andrew Lazar the producer of the movie American Sniper, then negotiated a deal with McMahon for the rights to his life story. Once McMahon was on board and McMahon's WWE Studios were part of the production team, the idea made the rounds in Hollywood and gathered interest from multiple parties. The port said that TriStar Pictures was in negotiations for the movie and went all out in the pitch and even to the point of decorating the offices with WWE merchandise. So, as of this point... WWE Studios and the writer of American Sniper, Andrew Lazar, will be creating the next McMahon movie. I want to know who's going to be playing Meek Mahan. <laughs> Who will be playing a Meek Mahan? Matt Hardy. <laughs> He'll render him obsolete. Uh, the movie will go straight to DVD, Greg says. <laughs> so, yeah, is it going to be an in-theaters movie? Or is I don't it know. straight to DVD? We'll have to see what happens. Um, we'll get, keep you guys updated. If you get Triple H to be in, the, in it, it'll go straight to DVD yeah. like Chaperone. Yeah, keep so. him out of there. Get the huge, horrible honker out of there. Uh, news on Brock Lesnar's first title defense. Wow. Have you guys seen the news that broke out today? <laughs> I was dying. I, I got I got Cobra Cappy on the phone, on the phone, and I uh, broke it to him, and I was dying. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't stop laughing. So l- let me just read this out for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Beast Incarnate will defend... This is the one part of it. The Beast Incarnate will defend his Derby Universal Championship for the first time since taking it from Bill Goldberg. In a brand new pay-per-view event called WWE Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> Goodness no gracious, man. This Pulled is really the name song? of the show? Really? Did you listen to that song today? Oh, just my come up with God. The idea. You changed Bad Blood to Great Balls of Fire. Talk about yeah. PG. Yeah, the three-month rule, Greg. So, yeah, this is going to be in July. July 9th. That's when Brock Lesnar will first defend his title. And it's Raw exclusive. And it's going to be replacing the rumored pip, Bad Blood paper that was supposed to be there at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. For you guys wow. to care, tickets go on sale to the public May 5th at 10 a.m. With Lesnar not defending the title until July, that means there will be no Universal Championship match at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view from Baltimore on June 4th. Of course, we already knew there would be no world title match at Sunday's payback event, which will feature several major stars drafted from SmackDown Live facing Raw talent. The program between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman is expected to continue past the Sunday's big show, which is leading to rumored speculation being that Strowman will be the one to face Brock Lesnar for the championship at WWE Great Balls of Fire. Did you say Sunday's big show? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is, that a, is that a hint? Does that mean big show is main eventing Extreme Rules because Brock Lesnar's not there? God, great Balls of Fire. Are you kidding me? I don't know what's worse, the fact that that's called Great Balls of Fire or the fact that Lesnar isn't even defending his title for two They're so days. losing touch, it's not even funny. RTM pointed it out. They're losing touch so bad. This is bad, man. Why great... is the Universal Champion, your main champion, not on two straight pay-per-views? And I'm just saying, Great Balls of Fire doesn't really sound PG, Vince. Just saying. You know there's going to be a lot of people making fun of that. Great Balls of Fire. What kind of pay-per-view name is that? What about great- Are we dumbing down to WCW? What is this shit? Might as well just call it Great Balls. What's wrong with Bad Blood? It's too it's too vulgar. Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> great Balls of Dumpster Fire. Oh That's my god. Is. Fucking terrible, man. I can't I don't even know if I want to watch it. I don't care what's on uh, it. I don't want to watch. It's going to be in the same category as Battleground Over the Limit. Breaking Point, all those crappy Fatal things. Four Way, Fatal Four Way, Fast yeah. Lane, yeah, garbage. Yeah, so we'll move on here, and I got some interesting news here. I got some rumor reports of WWE bringing back Mauro Ronaldo. Mm. Mm. Despite Mauro Ronaldo officially pardoning ways of WWE last week and issuing a statement confirming he will not be returning to SmackDown Live before his contract expires in August, 
His future in the WWE might not be closed just yet. According to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, there's some talk in WWE about bringing Ronaldo back to the company in the future. And the return for the former SmackDown commentator is not a dead issue. The report added that while there has been some early discussion about bringing back Ronaldo, the talks were said to be on a serious level, or not to be on a serious level. Hmm. That's because he's probably still freaking pissed off because Vince is the biggest bully in the world. And they probably, they're trying to make some settlement with him so he doesn't talk yeah. about it. Um, I'd like. I mean, we'd all love to see Ronaldo back, but yeah. I just don't know. Think it's possible with JBL on the commentary team. I think he'd only come back if he, he he chose to be on the show that JBL wasn't part of, and at pay per views, you know, be kept separate. You know, he could be kept with all the uh, international commentators. Yeah. Uh, last bit of news and news on hot topic in pro wrestling tees merchandising deal. And no, no, it is not about the headbangers getting <laughs> any merchandise. Not getting any merchandising deals. Everyone relax. Pro Wrestling Tees will be signing a deal with Hot Topic to add licensed New Japan Pro Wrestling merchandise in every Hot Topic worldwide. The original Bone Soldier Bullet Club shirt, so the original Bullet Club shirt, is planned for a nationwide release with the Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, and Young Bucks Bullet Club t-shirts stocked in the top 100 stores. It is expected that the shirts will be in stock starting at the end of May, beginning of June. You can see the shirts, uh, which are currently stocked at ProWrestlingTees.com. It's pretty Interesting. Big. Interesting. Pretty, Interesting. Pretty I, I'm going to get myself some Bullet Club merch. 100%. I'll get the original one. I'll probably get an Omega one. We'll see what the Cody run looks like. I haven't seen the Cody Rhodes one. We'll see what happens. No, but, do, but do they still get WWE merch? Yeah, if they're not getting headbangers. Everyone relax. They're not getting them. <laughs> They worked there. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, they worked there. They don't need their own merch. <laughs> Anyways, that is going to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen, for week number four of the Lowdown Show. Crappy week. Crappy number week. Four. I'm the host Bar Wrestling Podcast. We are Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment, our top moments of the week, the list of ten. And WWE headlines where we're talking about any important news and related rumors to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording the podcast, it is posted in full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, by searching The Lowdown Show. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at NoHoldsBarWP, enjoying the conversation and having your thoughts and questions right here on the show. They're also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching no Holds Bar WP. All the links will be in the description on YouTube below. I am your host, ladies and gentlemen, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week, I am continuing to be joined by my co-host right here. He's the blissful boss, Mr. Cooper himself, Cooper Cappy. He's the best say what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and as always, ladies and gentlemen, we are here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. You on the street. Come back, get back, and you have to set me.